morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here to talk about advocacy. And my name is Chad Hayward. I'm the executive director of Accord, which you might have heard of under former name. We used 30 years of, up until last week called uh, Airdome. And we don't engage in advocacy specifically, but we are a consortium of about 70 different uh, Christian relief and development organizations, all working in the U.S., uh, all functioning internationally also. Uh, it's great to be here, and uh, we have two great speakers. What we're going to do is they're each going to give a 15-minute talk or so. We'll throw it back open for questions uh, afterward for you all, so we'll hold those up until the end. Our two speakers are Adam Taylor of the World Vision and Galen Carey of the National Association of Evangelicals. I'll read their abbreviated bios here for you. For, Ed, for Adam, uh, Reverend Adam Russell Taylor currently serves as the Vice President of Advocacy at World Vision. Taylor previously served as a White House Fellow in the White House Office of Cabinet Affairs and Public Engagement. He was formerly the Senior Political Director at Sojourners, where he was responsible for leading the organization's advocacy, coalition building, and constituency outreach. He has also served as the Executive Director of Global Justice, an organization that educates and mobilizes students around global human rights, around global human rights and economic justice. Taylor is a graduate of Emory University, Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, and the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology. Taylor is, is the author of Mobilizing Hope, Faith-Inspired Activism for a Post-Civil Rights Generation. He's an ordained associate minister at the First Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., and he's married to Cherie McKenzie Taylor, and the father of six-month-old Joshua. And finally, Galen Carey, the National Association of Evangelicals, he is vice president there, where he represents the evangelical public policy concerns to Congress, the White House, and the court system. He works to advance the approach and principles of the NAE document for the health of a nation, an evangelical call to civic responsibility, promoting religious freedom, family, sanctity of life, justice for the poor, human rights, peace, and care creation. He is co-author of Caring for the Vulnerable in the NAE Compendium Toward an Evangelical Policy. And interestingly, you know, with, with your purview, it's, so, it's about as wide as it gets in this town, <laughs> from uh, you know, abortion to climate change to um, nuclear disarmament. So um, that's a lot to work with. So with this, I'll throw it open to Galen. Thank you, Chad. And uh, some of you know my wife, Deb, as she came along today, too, that that's her over there. So you can say her you don't know her. Um, and I uh, just want to show you a couple things before I start talking uh, that you're welcome to have and brought some coffees. This is called For the Health of the Nation, an Evangelical Call to Civic Responsibility. All right, so this is um, basically the NAE Bible for public engagement, and it's what guides me in the work that I do in representing evangelical concerns. And then secondly, uh, this booklet here called Government, Global Poverty, and God's Mission in the World. An evangelical declaration. Uh, this is a document coming out of a consultation which we held last year in Wheaton, Wheaton Illinois, uh, co sponsored by Bread for the World and a number of other organizations. Uh, but it's basically uh, another look at, at what we talked about in the Delta Nation, uh, but particularly looking at the role of government and you know, is, there a, is there a positive role for government to play. And then finally, uh, somewhat unrelated to our direct discussion here, but some of you may be interested in this called The Theology of Sex, uh, which is an attempt to talk about, uh, in a positive way, what is it that um, the Bible teaches about sex and how does that relate to uh, issues such as pregnancy, abortion, and, uh, contraception, and things like that. So these are all available if you're interested. Now, before I start talking, I would like to just take a minute or less to find out um, where you all are at with the advocacy. So what I want to know is, just give me a show of hands, how many of you uh, know the name of your congressman? Uh, how many of you met your congressman? Okay, good. Uh, how many of you know the name of somebody uh, that works in the administration? Good. Uh, all right, so this uh, some idea. Um, I'm, I'm talking to a group of uh, polished practitioners, so that's helpful. Uh, so, okay, um, you can hit, oh, let me just tell you, you can hit the next slide. Sorry. 
Um, when you imagine that you're, you are uh, the world's physician, okay, so we're going to take a, just a snapshot look at the world's, uh, where we are in world's health. All right, so uh, just give me a few uh, responses here. What are the vital signs? Not a public health indicators. Okay, such as? Um, maternal mortality, child mortality, infant mortality. Okay. Of things. All right, all right. Yeah, so how are we doing overall? Are we in a good Not place? Well. <laughs> all right, what are some of the symptoms that we see? Symptoms of uh, the world's uh, health condition. All right. And what's your diagnosis? Remember, you're a busy physician. You don't have long. So. Devaluation of people. Devaluation of people. Mm -hmm. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. Lack of love. Lack of love. Disharmony mm -hmm. creation. Disharmony creation. Heart failure. Heart failure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, and finally, what's your treatment plan? Love. Love. Uh, disjointed programs. <laughs> disjointed programs. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I think if you wanted, those of you who are interested in competition, you're supposed to be in the next room, right? <laughs> These are, you all are here because you want to cooperate. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, anything else? Uh, a treatment plan. Um, All right, I just uh, I just bring this up to start to 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 point out that uh, what we do in advocacy depends a whole lot on what we diagnose the situation to be. So if the situation is a lack of love, you may have one response, and if you think there's if there's too many people around, you may have a different response. Uh, and a lot of times we kind of jump into advocacy without having taken a step back to think, why are we advocating and, and what's, uh, what is it that we're trying to uh, respond to next? When we look at the uh, world's health system, you know, of course there are many players, or partners, you might call them. Uh, and you all know this better than I because you work in this field, but ind individuals, families uh, have important roles, probably some of the most important roles in, in terms of health, but communities are involved, health professionals, employers, uh, and businesses as well, um, pharmacies, um, so there are for-profit and health systems, um, and there are of course also businesses that are impacting health just by the nature of what they do, like mining companies, for example, or other, sometimes for good, sometimes not for good. And then there are private health institutions that I'm imagining some of you are involved with. And then there's government. And advocacy could be done at any of these levels, and I know you, you probably have experience in those. But we're going to talk, I think, primarily today about advocacy with government, but uh, as we, we know, it's a, government isn't the only player, and so we need to also be thinking about uh, the other parts as well. All right, uh, just a few thoughts, and a lot of this I'm taking from the NEs for the Health of the Nation, in terms of a theological basis of what, you know, where do we start from? And just a few, I think there are well-known thoughts, but you may not have thought of them, how they affect advocacy, but our creation mandate, uh, the fact that Jesus is Lord, the kingdom of God and shalom. So let's talk briefly about those. All right, so we know in, from the very first chapter of the Bible uh, that the human beings uh, were given a, a responsibility. So sometimes we refer to as dominion, and, and that has some, for some people, negative connotations, but it certainly doesn't need to. Um, it's actually a very positive, uh, uh, it's actually stewardship. Uh, and so we are responsible to care for the earth and for the people in it. Now, one of the dimensions of our dominion or stewardship mandate is uh, government. 
government is one of those institutions that God uh, gives uh, to create social order in which other actors can flourish. And if you um, ever doubt the importance of government, you, all you have to do is look at a place where there is no government. Uh, some, some Somalia comes to mind as one example. Uh, and when there is no government, even a, a bad government is, work, is better than no government. Uh, because when there's no government, uh, then, then our worst instincts come out. Uh, so, so, if government then is part of, has, has responsibilities under God, uh, then we should be able to call them to account for those responsibilities. In a, in a representative democracy such as us, government are us, right? So it's not, we don't only think of government as them out there, but we're actually part of it. So when we, when we do our part as citizens, we're actually part of the functioning of, of government and the creation of the And uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, this is a fundamental, uh, this is the first uh, basically Christian doctrine or Christian uh, statement of faith. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Lord over all. That includes all things relating to health and disease and of course when Jesus um, healed he was demonstrating his Lordship over these. We're told in Colossians he was the creator of all things and that in him all things hold together. Uh, so if Jesus is Lord that means that all areas of life including our common governance are subject to the Lordship of Christ. And we, again, should be able to call them to account. And we know that the kingdom of God uh, is, was the principal theme of Jesus' teaching. Uh, and we know that the kingdom of God has come and is coming. There's a tension that it's already here and not yet. Uh, but uh, we are invited to participate in the reign of God, in God's reign over all areas of life, including health and healing. Uh, leading to the flourishing of all is another reason that we should be involved in the advocacy of government. And finally, the concept of shalom, which is found throughout the Bible and is uh, one of the uh, fullest expressions of God's intentions for humankind, the wholeness uh, and holistic well-being, and certainly includes health and human flourishing in all dimensions. Uh, it also has to do with uh, how we resolve conflicts, and the fact that there needs to be adequate provision for all. And so this is the biblical vision for human life, and government has a role to play in, in making this vision possible. All right, now just a few components of Christian advocacy. Uh, we need a normative vision, uh, and then we need factual analysis, and we need proposed solutions. And then we need to, to propose our solutions with humility and civility. So, uh, when we talk about normative vision, we mean what is it that, uh, how do we interpret life? Uh, how do we understand human beings as people made in God's image? Uh, people who uh, are marred by uh, the fall from grace and sin, which uh, infects all areas of life but doesn't uh, eradicate all of the good. Uh, so we need to understand who people are, and that will help us to understand uh, who government is, what its opportunities and limitations are, and in terms of society, what the needs uh, that government could legitimately address or not. And then it, specifically for the work that you all do, we need to have a view of health and understanding what health means uh, what, and what is it that you're trying to promote as you go out to serve as Christian health ministers.